I still like the songs that Mama sang the best. When I was just a child, I heard my Mama sing to me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I loved its melody. But the memory that stands apart of all of the rest, I still like the songs that Mama sang the best. And she'd sing, Hide me, old blessed rock of ages. A melody, a song. Of the blessed, and if we never meet again, this side of heaven, I still like the songs that Mama sang the best. Now I'm a man, and somehow it seems that time has slipped away. And all that's left of childhood days are precious memories. But the memory that stands apart of all of the rest, I still like the songs that Mama sang the best. And she'd sing, say, Save me, my precious Lord, hear my humble cry, and I'll anchor my soul in the haven of rest. I still like the songs that Mama sang the best. I still like the songs that Mama sang the best. There's a lot I never said to you, though I really don't know why. Maybe I thought that you would laugh. Maybe I knew that I would cry. You gave me everything you could without any guarantee. You tried your best to raise me right, hoping one day that you would see that it was worth it all. You didn't waste your time for everything that you went through. For this life I now call mine, and you were always there to pick me up if I should fall. I hope that you can say that it was worth it all. Taught me how to live and to love. And if I had the things I needed, I had more than enough. But the greatest thing that you ever gave to me is the one I'm especially thankful for. You taught me about Jesus. And now I can say for sure that it was worth it all. You didn't waste your time for everything that you went through. For this life I now call mine and you were always there to pick me up if I should fall. 
hope that you can say that it was worth it all. When my life is over and I finally fly away, I want to leave behind a legacy and I want my children to say, Daddy, it was worth it all. You didn't waste your time for everything that you went through. For this life I now call mine, and you were always there to pick me up if I should fall. I hope that you can say that it was worth it all. It was worth it all. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to this very special event uh, of singing these songs. Uh, and I will be telling some stories about Mom. As you all know, Mom has been called to glory to be with our Lord and Savior be with my dad and family and with Old Pathway Baptist Church and they're up there now singing the songs of Zion singing the songs of praise to the Lord Jesus Christ and to God the Father who has given us all life so as we continue on I want to tell a few stories and sing some songs here songs of mom, things that she left behind, thoughts. I was asked on the way down on last Thursday of my most special memory of mom. And it has to be my first memory of mom, and it's not what you would expect it to be. My first memories, I always thought, was when we lived in Cedar Lake in Arrowhead, and I was very little at the time. I was, what, two, maybe three years old I had at the age. And this is not the memory I'm going to tell. I'm just throwing this out to you because it was at one time my memory that I had. And this is the reason why I love Captain Crunch cereal, by the way. We had these Captain Crunch cereal crunch berries. I wanted a bowl. Mom was nowhere to be around. And I poured myself my first bowl of cereal. Getting the cereal was easy, no problem at all. But when it came down to getting that gallon of milk that was a challenge for a two to three year old. I can lift a gallon of milk like nothing now. And I laughed to myself at this event because when I got that milk out of the refrigerator and carried it to the table, I had this thought in my mind, I cannot spill this, mom will kill me. I have to be very, very careful of how I pour. I don't want nothing sloshing out, mom will kill me. Mom was nowhere to be found, by the way. I poured that milk successfully, put the lid back, and put it back in the refrigerator. No problem. Still heavy. But this is my... That was my second. This is my first one. When I was born, I was very sick. I had double pneumonia. And I remember one night in, I believe it has to be, uh, I want to say like Melody Lane or uh, Riley Village. I was in the crib. Mom just came home from a 311 shift working at Simmons Mattress Company. No doubt she was tired. And she seen that I was up because I was wheezing, scuffing, and all my eyes were open. 
she picked me up out of the crib and she came and she set me down in a rocking chair. There is my earliest memory of mom and mom singing to me Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Then she went off and she sung a few other songs. And she thought I was asleep by the fourth, fifth song. And she got was going to get up and lay me in the crib. And I thought in my mind, now this is a baby mind you thinking this. I thought in my mind, I don't want her to stop singing to me. I want one more song, just one more song. So I moved my arm up and opened my eyes a little. She sat back down in my rocking chair and she sung the last song. Was I still awake? Yes. Did mom know? No. I pretended, my first pretending program, acting that I was asleep. Though I was awake. She walked me back to the crib laid me down in it and she turned and she walked out and she called out dad's name i guess they were supposed to eat or get ready for bed or do something and she shut the door in our life growing up singing was a pastime mom made it because she was a singer that's exactly what mom was being a professional house cleaner and all that, she was a singer. When Ellen and I were growing up, we had a big, huge uh, photograph thing that played LPs on it. Took up most of the room. If you guys remember this, then this is back in the 60s and 70s, mind you. You gotta remember this. And we had every kind of music. Dad had to have his George Jones, Stanley Brothers, Tom T. Hall. But we had other various artists there in our home that we could go and listen to. Conway Twitty and all these others. And we kind of knew that they had their signature song. And that's what I'll sing next to you will be mom's signature song. But in our home, you had to know Conway Twitty, signature song. Hello, darling. Gloria Lynn, coal miner's daughter. You had to know uh, other people's uh, signature songs in there as well as they play uh, or uh, Johnny Cash would come up and say hello I'm Johnny Cash and he'd sing Folsom Prison Blues and down through the years as Alan and I grew up we stuck to bluegrass and uh, traditional country music in his room you could hear George Strick play Full Heart and Memory we had other various artists like John Anderson plays swinging. We would have Sylvia who played Nobody. And for me, you had Ronnie Millsap singing Smoky Mountain Rain. And right now, I'm gonna take this time to say if anybody in here that's listening to this does not know Barbara Mandrell's signature song, I'm sorry. We might be relatives, we might be cousins, we might be friends, whatever, but you know, I, I'm, you know, you don't know Barbara's signature song like, you know, you know, well, about far as we can go. You can laugh at that. This is mom's signature song. And before she passed, she heard me sing it to her once. And then when Pastor Bob came, and a couple of his congregation was there over the bed. I sing the song to her one last time. As he delivered a little speech, and we prayed over her the last time before she passed away. 
Here's Mom's signature song, Matthew 24. I believe the time is coming for our Lord to come again. I believe the end is nearing at every door. I believe the good old Bible from beginning to the end. Just compare today with Matthew 24. We are living, surely living, in the days it speaks about. All of these we now are having every day. Let's get ready for He's coming. Let us meet Him with a shout. For He tells us it is words to watch and pray. While upon the Mount of Olives His disciples came to Him, saying, Tell us when these things are going to be. Jesus answered, Be ye watching, let everyone be free from sin, and take heed no man should ever be deceived. We are living, surely living, in the days it speaks about. All of these we now are having every day. Let's get ready for He's coming. Let us meet Him with a shout. For He tells us in His words to watch and pray. Many wars will come upon us when the end of time is near. Many earthquakes will be numerous in those days. All of these today we're having, and in Matthew it appears. We should live our lives for Him and sing His praise. We are living, surely living, in the days it speaks about. All of these we now are having every day. Let's get ready for He's coming. Let us meet Him with a shout. For He tells us in His words to watch and pray. When I was a small child, when we lived out in Cedar Lake, um, in Arrowhead, this next song was a song Mom would sing at the lodge while she was cleaning, or at the house. She very rarely sung this song at church. The Cheek Sisters will always have their songs. And if Mom would remember it, this would be uh, a song she'd sing. But it, it, this is my favorite song of Mom of all time. And... This is, has to be my personal favorite of hers. And I, when I sing this, I'll sing this right straight through, but the second verse hits home so much to me on this song. And if I was honest with myself, the very first time actually I did hear it was when mom was rocking me to sleep, like I was telling you that story is when I first heard it. No doubt, that's probably the reason why I love the song so much. It goes like this. I'm only a pilgrim and a stranger Through this unfriendly world I roam Serving him who has called me from darkness and who's promised a heavenly home of this wonderful love I am telling wherever on earth I may roam <coughs> I'm 
trying each day to be faithful to the Savior who suffered for me. I'm longing for home. Oh, the sun's going down. I want to go where sweet rest can be found. Well, I'm just about through with this old house of clay. I'm leaving this world for glory someday. Soon our labor on earth will be ended. We'll be leaving this old world for a. Soon we'll close the dark shadows of darkness for a land that is fairer, they say. In the Bible we read of a city whose builder is Jesus, we're told. One day this great tent will be folded and the beautiful scene shall unfold. I'm longing for home. Oh, the sun's going down. I want to go where sweet rest can be found. Well, I'm just about through with this old house of clay. I'm leaving this world for glory someday. When I was at the funeral home, I had a couple of unexpected visits, which I am very grateful for. As Peggy Miller came, and uh, we had lost contract for quite a while. She had come to the church, lost my, or she had my old, old, old phone number. Couldn't get in touch with me. And she said that she seen Amanda at Walmart, and Amanda had told her about what had happened, and she had to come, and I'm so grateful for her to come. Another lady that came with her husband was Victoria, and we're very close. Her and mom's uh, cousin, uh, another cousin she has by the name of Brenda, Kay Smith, and uh, we talked. Her husband has been to Arrowhead. And he said he's been there so just recently. It's not the same like we would have known back in the 70s when uh, Vic Curse owned it. And Chuck, the uh, guy that uh, was the head guy out there, dad would uh, help Chuck out and work with Chuck living on there, on the land. And they grew attached, Vic, Chuck, and dad which helped Dad out later on in Dad's lifetime. And we were talking about the stories Mom left behind. Mom would take Alan and I to Red Top, where Vic Curse owned. His son-in-law took it over, Wayne Paulson. And Dad worked with them as a night watchman, and Dad, Mom would clean. And that's where Mom started her cleaning practices and become a professional cleaner for houses, for homes, for businesses. She would take Alan and I, and she would take us, and at times she would open up and she'd tell us her life story. I once told Mom, she said, why don't you just sit down and write all these stories in a book? I got that idea from a guy named yours truly, Bob Wilcox, who wrote everything down on a daily Planogram that he had on his desk. And we would all go read. And there were times where Burl, Audrey, Rita would come over and spend the night. We'd all go over there and we'd read what Bob had wrote. He was our first inspiration and yours truly of how to write. He wanted, when he retired, to take everything he wrote and publish it into a book. However, from my knowledge, that never happened. 
So I'm trying to get mom to do that, and mom said no. One of the stories Victoria was would tell us was the very first story of the book, where mom was a really young kid, around maybe what, maybe four, and Brenda was maybe what, three, two, something like that. And my grandparents would have to go away, maybe what, once a month, twice a month, or once a month, twice, once every two, three months to the local grocery store to get the things that they couldn't grow, didn't need. And in those days, a trip like that would take at least eight hours. So here Edith and Ethel was having the day plan of how they're going to play. However, their mom and dad needed them to be babysitters over their two daughters. Or their two sisters. That wasn't going to happen as far as Edith and Ethel was concerned. Edith and Ethel had other plans. So, whenever this would happen, like once every three months or whatever, they would take Mom and Brenda to the shed and lock them in there all day long. You got me, all day long. And they would tell them that Indians were out there and they're going to go out there and get Indians and look them over and scalp them and all that. <coughs> it never dawned on mom and Brenda that they never had anything to show for their little adventures out there eight hours a day. And mom would say one day, one time it was Indians. <coughs> the next day it would be bears. The next day it would be tigers. And so on and so forth. Until they finally found out. She said Brenda was in there until much she had to wet on herself. I'm just throwing that out there. My mom said. They were locked in there. And mom grew up thinking, this is a very cruel place to live. Who would want to live here? I'm pausing. Another story mom would tell us was her mother Edna would go full clothes and she would sit there in full clothes with mom with grandma <coughs> and the story mom would always have grandma tell her was the coat of many colors. Joseph and the coat of many colors. Mother, mom would love that song or that story more than probably any other in the Old Testament. She couldn't figure out how, you know, her brothers would, his brothers would abandon him and all this other stuff in the story as grandma would go. Very, very soon, when I get to heaven, I'm gonna have a chance to see my grandmother, Edna, and I'm gonna sit down and have her tell me the story as she told it to mom of Joseph in the coat of many colors. And I often pictured this at work when I was saying this to myself. I'm like, yeah, she's going to do that, and Joseph's going to be somewhere right near us, and he's going to say, okay, now let me finish the details of what happened. Let me tell you the, the, the story from my point of view since I lived it. My mom was a little child, very young. My Uncle Roscoe would go out, and he would uh, work on the washers, dryers, appliances for people and fix them for them. And later on in life, he became a master mechanic doing all this work. And as he would work on these machines, he'd find mom and he'd sit mom up on the washer or the dryer. And he'd say these words to her, sing, so not sing. And mom would sing and he would 
fix the appliances. And this has how mom grew to love singing. And as she hear my grandmother sing throughout the house, singing Thomas hymns, as she would too. Years later, from Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, a young girl comes out and she became one of mom's favorite singers. And she turned around as she went to Nashville and she became a sing singer and songwriter, songwriter or singer, however you want to put it. She turns around and she wrote many songs. And this one in particular that fits this story that mom sings as I'll try to sing it. Back through the years, I go wandering once again. Back to the seasons of my youth. I recall a box of rags that someone gave us. And how that mama put the rags to use. There were rags of many colors. And every piece was small. And I didn't have a coat. And it was way down in the fall. Mama sewed the rags together. Sewing every piece with love. She made my coat of many colors that I was so proud of. As she sewed, she told the story from the Bible she had read about a coat of many colors Joseph wore and then she said, perhaps this coat will bring you good luck and happiness. And I just couldn't wait to wear it and Mama blessed it with a kiss. My coat of many colors that my mama made for me Made only from rags, but I wore it so proudly Although we had no money, I was rich as I could be In my coat of many colors my mama made for me so with patches on my britches and holes in both my shoes, my coat of many colors, I hurried off to school just to find the others laughing and I'm making fun of me in my coat of many colors that mama made for me. And oh, they couldn't understand it for I felt I was rich and I told them all the love my mama sewed in every stitch and I told them all the story mama told me why she sewed and how my coat of many colors was was worth than all their clothes but they didn't understand it and I tried to make them see that one is only poor, only if they choose to be. Now I know we had no money, but I was rich as I could be in my coat of many colors my mama made for me made just for me. Many years later, in about 1974, my mom and her four and her three sisters, the Cheek sisters, would go off and make their very first and very last album. And when you look at the album on the front, you don't really think much of it. Then you look in the back of the album and you see them with their hairdos. We call it beehive hairdos if we wanted to. And uh, they're all sitting around with this. They're not smiling at all, by the way, in this photograph. And people have often said, I wonder why didn't they smile? Why couldn't they smile? 
You know, we, we think maybe the uh, person taking the photograph told him probably not to smile. But the truth is there was something happened before they took the picture. I was there, by the way. Rita Burns was there with her stroller. I was there in my stroller. Richie Cheek was there in his stroller. And Tina Curry, whom, to whom we refer to in those days as Fat Lakes Curry, was all there in our strollers, locked in place. Mom would tell me not to get out under any circumstances. Okay, Mom, you're the boss. They go up there and they position themselves and they take the picture or try to take the picture. I'm here in the stroller looking around. All innocent, of course. Everything's all right except for Tina, who is having a sippy cup and going to town in the sippy cup. She's drinking it like a lifelong friend. Her little fingers move and drop the sippy cup. Instead of crying for her mother, Tina turns around and makes the conscious move of trying to get the sippy cup. As she moves one way, gravity moves the other way. The stroller starts tipping. This does not stop Tina in her pursuit to get that sippy cup. I know by thinking of this, if somebody don't go and get that sippy cup and give it to her, she is going to fall flat down on that concrete, cry her eyes out, getting that sippy cup, <coughs> disrupting everything. Getting out of that stroller was a very difficult challenge for me. None to say. It was not easy getting out. I got out. I started going over there, walking, running, whatever, over there to get that sippy cup. I hear the most deafening sound that a child could ever make. This, this is the sound that will scare any child at all. Just a snap of the fingers floored me and put terror in my heart. As I turned around to see, and I knew where it was coming from, it was coming from my mother. Have you ever seen The Exorcist? The 70s version? Here mom is. Go back to your seat and don't get out. I'm going over there to get the sippy cup. Give it to the You go over there and don't you move. Can you save it for Alan when he gets here? I go over there. Give her the sippy cup and just stay there and not move. The funniest thing about all this is, <coughs> if that's not funny enough, the funniest thing of, of this is Richie thinks that this is something going on between the cousins. And he gets out of his stroller and he comes over and he visits us. And I'm looking at him like, why did you get out of your stroller? I mean, we, I, I, why? Richie said, to me, Oh, you did it. I was getting the sippy cup for Tina so she doesn't fall on her face and have a complete breakdown. Oh, okay.
little stories like that just spice up the picture. As they were going through getting collecting the songs, their eight songs for the album, and the two instrumentals. One night, Brenda and Mom got together and with pen to paper wrote this song that became the number one song on the album and the title for the album in particular. And this is coming from the heart of my mother, by the way. Let us live and love one another. And it goes like this. Let us live and love one another as God would have us to do. Let's pray for all of our neighbors so they will make it to our days are swiftly passing and the end is drawing near the Savior is calling you sinner the ones we love that's so dear let us live and love one another as God would have us to do let's pray for all of our neighbors so they will make it to dear God you know all our burdens and the sins that we used to do but now I know I'm forgiven since your light has shone through let us live and love one another as God would have us to do let's pray with all of our neighbors so they I'm going to add this other song in. It's the last final thing we were talking about this. Alan was going to try to find it on the CD that I gave him, which technically I'll never see the CD again. Which Alan doesn't know I wrote all the songs down, so therefore, you know, if I never get the CD back, I guess I never get the CD back. But anyway, <coughs> he tried finding this song. I'll have to go over there and get now the Cheek Sisters uh, hymnals that I got. Uh, both. And uh, he couldn't find it. And I found it in there and I wrote it down and I was going to sing it to him. But I guess they figured with Alan and I, with this state we would be in, we wouldn't be able to sing or anything, which I was trying my best to do this if need be. So I gave him the uh, the paper that the song was on. As we went to say our final goodbye to mom at the grave. So here, let me get this get a drink here. try to sing this. It's called Beyond the River. 
Yes, this is where mom's songs, the Cheek Sister songs are all in. Matter of fact, be my thing. Yes. All right. It's in my other book. The mom gets our uh, notes together. One of the songs she sung, I'm singing it, so I'm putting it in my own book for the It's called Beyond the River. Some happy morning, perhaps tomorrow, I'll say farewell to my loved ones here. And take my flight to my home in glory, for I am ready and have no fear. Beyond the river, I'll ever roam. Beyond the is home sweet home beyond the river on the other side i'll be with jesus fully satisfied beyond the river just over yonder i'll meet my savior on the master's throne and there forever his praise is singing because he loves me and he saved my soul i hope to meet you Beyond the river, get ready now for the coming day when Jesus calls us. There'll be no waiting, trust now the Savior, do not delay. Beyond the river, I'll ever roam. Beyond the river is home, sweet home. Beyond the river, on the other side, I'll be with Jesus, fully satisfied. I didn't have a chance, but when Terry was talking, 
this song, if I can ever find it, came to my mind. If I can't sing it, I'll just sing the uh, verse or the, the chorus to it that I can remember. Way back here. I do have pops somewhere. There it is. I see it. Terry was up talking and all this, and this reminded me of Mom, where I will find her. When we were at Bible Baptist Church, one night, was it Sunday night or Wednesday? I don't know. But Susie gets up with the three sisters and she makes this testimony. As they're about to sing this song. And they, and she says, when you get to heaven, I'm going to tell you exactly where I'm going to be at. Don't look for me here, or there, or wherever. You can. If you guys really want to see me, you'll find me at the feet of Jesus. They said in the song, you can look at me at the walls of Jasper, the gates of pearls, and all that, but I won't be there. I'll be there at the feet of Jesus. And Ma, Brenda, and I, me, all had agreed the same thing that night. That when we get to heaven, if we want to find Mom, We'll find her at the feet of Jesus, alongside with Imogene now and Aunt Susan. If I leave this world of sorrow sometime before you do, just look for me in heaven and where talk the whole ages through but at first you fail to see me 
let me tell you where I'll be. I'll be thanking Christ, my Savior, for saving a wretch like me. Don't look near the gates of pearls. Don't look at the streets of gold. Don't look at the walls of jasper nor among the many signs untold for i've been longing and i've been waiting for that precious holy one to see there I'll be through the countless ages. Look for me at Jesus' feet. But if you reach that city before my time has come, perhaps you'd like to greet me when my race down here is run just wait for i'll soon be coming across across life's saving sea And I'll tell you where, my brother, just where to wait for me. Don't look near the gates of pearls. Don't dwell on the streets of gold. Don't look by the walls of jasper nor among the many signs untold for i've been longing and i've been waiting for that precious holy one to see there i'll be through the countless ages, look for me at Jesus' feet. I was trying my best to figure out how to close this. Scrambling my mind, what songs would click? I could sing the song that I... If you listen to my broadcast, there will be a song that I have picked out and I close with that song. That song is precious to me because my mom, again, at Red Top, told us the story of how she got saved. She is under old-time Holy Ghost conviction and she didn't want to get saved. She begged not, you know, not to go or whatever to church, whatever, but at that time, I think Grandpa knew Mom's condition. And out of all the people, sisters, what he knew that Mom had to go to church. <clears throat> well, one night, it was on a Wednesday night, and they got dressed. And that night, Mom begged Dad like you would never, or Grandpa like you'd never believe not to go. You're going. End of story. So mom, going, upset, angry, cheek temper, whatever, went, and she said, okay, this is the game plan. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit in that pew in the middle of everybody. So there's no way possible that I can get out. I am not moving. But I'm going to sit there, and I'm not moving. She does not remember the songs that they sung. They do not remember the or the uh, the uh, 
songs that they sung as they sung in Eden Hall. They don't, she doesn't even remember the message that the preacher preached, the evangelist that was there. But she always remembered that one song as she she has no idea how she got out of the aisle but she did and she ran to the altar and she repented and gave her life to the Lord that night when she was a young girl and I say young girl I'm, I'm thinking 12 11 12 something like that but I'm not going to look it up right now the song right now but I close out with that song in my broadcast. But when I was down there in Kentucky, spending the last few hours with mom, this song came to my mind and I said, this is a fitting end to this broadcast and this song, this song would be a great tribute to her. And it goes like this. I've been on my way to heaven for a long, long time. And many things have happened that's clouded up my mind. But I am more determined to walk the narrow way. I've got more to go to heaven for than I've had yesterday. There's the golden streets to walk upon, a bell I'm gonna ring, a brand new angel in the choir, I'm gonna hear her sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gates, I've got more to go to heaven for that I've had yesterday. I've been through the lonesome valleys and I've climbed the highest hills. I've known the joy of being in the center of God's will. I've watched the angels come and take my loved ones home to stay. I've got more to go to heaven for than I've had yesterday. There's the golden streets to walk upon, a bell I'm gonna ring, a brand new angel in the choir, I'm gonna hear her sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gates, I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. I've got more to go to heaven for than I've had yesterday. Dear Lord, as we bow before the throne of grace, thanking you for always your endless mercy and your grace but thanking you right now for the salvation that you've given to man and to take my mother home right now that I may see her in the distant future in the next few hours for Lord I know I don't have very much time left upon this earth the time of God's old clock right now is pointing through that midnight hour as the Cheek Sisters used to sing. Very, very soon, I'll be reunited with my loved ones, my brothers, my sisters, my dad, my mom, and my grandparents. Until then, Lord, keep me strong. Keep me in your will. Keep me preaching. Keep me always looking and abounding in your word. And then through the and then through the journey of the spirit that he's putting me in. Learning things that we need to know 
and we need to teach and preach before the end of time. Our time. In your name we pray and ask in Christ's name. Amen.